I'm good. I'm good in the hood. Hey friends, good to see you on this Wednesday. This week on the Final Cut Bro, I'm gonna be showing you my five step process for making any song work for your videos. This video is gonna be a little bit longer, so I will have time codes beneath if there's any section you wanna to skip to. Let's get started. Final Cut Pro. Um, this is actually my channel trailer and if you're interested in watching that there will be a card in the upper right hand corner that you can click on and watch it just to get a better idea of what we're working with. But today I just wanted to show you how I actually edited the music for this video. So to get started we're going to come up here and find our music track. Now this is actually just a preview clip and I will um, later put in the actual clip but this is just a common practice in larger productions where you don't buy the song until you're ready for it. So this one actually has uh, a watermark over it you can hear. Sounds straight. Sounds straight. So I'll show you how you can edit the preview version and then later change it to the full version without losing any of your edits. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is right click on this particular track and we are going to assign the audio role of music. Now I'll show you why that's important in just a second. From there, we're going to click and drag this onto our timeline and I have everything soloed, so we'll just push Alt S to unsolo um, all of our clips. From there, we're going to want to work solely with, um, with our music track. So we're just gonna come up to the index and this is why it was important to set it as a music track. We can actually disable the sound effects and the, the dialogue track and only hear our music effects without having to push Alt S every time we wanna edit it. We're going to actually wanna create this into a compound clip before we do any editing. So if we right click, we can go up to new compound clip or if you want, you can also do Alt G. We're gonna just name that music track. All right, so if we listen to this song, let's see what we're kind of getting into. Sounds drive. Okay, so it's a little bit more epic at the beginning and I actually kind of wanted to start out a little softer. So unfortunately the song starts out pretty big and epic and I wanted to maybe start it off with some piano and I looked around for a lot of music tracks that do start with piano but I just couldn't find anything that meshed well with this particular track. So all we're going to do is come on over here to the end and if you listen there's actually some really nice soft piano. So we'll just go ahead and play through. Sounds drive. And you'll notice that that real beautiful piano keys playing. So that is exactly what we want. We're going to go ahead and edit this by chopping and we will drag the beginning, or not the beginning, but we'll drag this section of music to the very beginning of the video. And we can drag this other part away. And you know what? We're actually going to take our music uh, index and drag that up. And then we're going to push this button here, focus timeline on this roll. And then all we will see is the music tracks. Just a quick helpful tip. So now you'll notice that we've chopped the music but if we open our compound clip, the music is laid out exactly how it used to be. And this is really helpful because if we play it now, we've got the Drive. sound stripe um, watermark on it and we wanna get that removed after we've fully downloaded the song. So go ahead and open your compound clip and I have another downloaded version of the same song, but it's the full quality version. And we'll just drag that right on top and then we can disable the preview version. And now when we play it, it's the full quality version without any watermarks. And we still maintained the edits that we did previously. That was something that always really frustrated me when I had to use preview clips. And um, so yeah, this is just a quick method I figured out on how to fix that. So let's go ahead and just play through part of this section and I'll actually activate the dialogue and sound effects mesh together in an intricate dance to create both story and emotion. At age nine, I began making films to express myself in a visual manner. 
Okay, so you'll notice that the music track ends a little bit prematurely and I really wanted it to carry through to the epic build. So all we're gonna do is find a moment where this track actually repeats itself. So let's go ahead and play through. Films now more now. So that note is very similar to that note. They're actually the same note. So we're going to make our edits based off of that. So what we will do is come on in here right where that piano note starts. Actually, I need to get rid of this so I can hear what I'm hearing. That's right where the piano note starts, so we'll take that. We're going to push Alt and click and drag, and this will give us another version of this track. And we'll just put that, actually, we'll go ahead and delete that for now. Just get it out of here. And we'll come on in here and let's see how this matches up. It looks like it might be off a little bit. Yeah, so it's a little bit off. So we're gonna line up these tracks perfectly. So if I double click on both of these waveforms, you'll notice how it expands it and we can click and drag and look real closely. Let me increase the size here a little bit. And you'll notice that our waveforms are just a little bit off. So we are going to click and drag this just a little bit over and we can actually use the period and comma keys. There we go, that's what we'll call them. Um, to move it left and right and they have little arrows on them just to help you remember that. And that'll help us move it uh, one frame at a time. So let's go ahead and see if that lines up. Great, so they do line up. Now there's an awkward edit. So to fix that, click and drag these handles and add a slight crossfade. And now let's go ahead and play through. A very smooth edit that you would never be able to tell, especially behind some nice sound effects and whatnot. So we've got those all set. Now let's go ahead and continue to play through our video and see what the music is doing for us. At age nine, I began making films to express myself in a visual manner. Now, Nearly 15 years later, it remains the thing I am most passionate about. Uh, yeah, we're off to a good start. So you'll notice in the song, there's this kind of U-shaped thing happening. And this is where the really big epic build happens. Better express yourself. So that's the part of the track that I want to hit as our video starts to kind of, you know, take off. So let's go ahead and find the exact moment that those drums hit. We'll just, uh, Deselect the dialogue and effects again, and we're gonna go through frame by frame using the arrow keys. It seems to be this exact moment here. So we're gonna push M and that will create a marker. And I know because I've already made this video that I want it to hit right on this big explosion here. So we're going to click and drag our marker to right at that moment. And then I will reactivate it with V and we'll just have a fade in and let's just see how that's working. All right, so now we're going to find the ending of our video. So if I come over here, we'll just play through. Okay, so that is right where I want the ending to happen. So you'll notice on this really big drum hit, um, I think we can do a really easy transition. So I'll just play through. Right there, right where it goes to white. So we'll just come back, find that exact frame. Disable our dialogue and effects again. Right there, we'll push B uh, for blade and we'll cut it. And then we will come here to the end, which is typically a really great point for just finishing off your video. So if you listen, There's that really nice bass drop that happens. So let's go ahead and take that portion. Right where that bass drop happens. We'll delete this large portion here. And there. 
there. It's got a nice ending. And then we'll just do a little bit more finessing here. So we will double click both tracks. And then I am going to add a few frames on this underneath clip. And we'll just add a little crossfade and another crossfade there. And let's go ahead and play through. Nice. Man, this tutorial is starting to get a little bit long, but hopefully you're you're hanging in there. So I think we just about have all of our music tracks together. If we uh, go ahead and just play through on our dialogue and sound effects. Join me in this new adventure as we work together to better express ourselves through the medium of film. Yeah, that seems to be working great. And you'll notice I wanted it to end right at 1.30, so we can just fade off the ending there. Really quickly, if this video is helping you at all, I would really appreciate a like. Also consider subscribing if you're interested in more videos just like this one. Let's continue on. Our next step, that last one was kind of long, but this next one will go much faster. So we're just gonna click and drag everything we're gonna right click and do new compound clip and we'll call it finished music track. That'll get everything down um, to an easy maintainable place. Okay, so this next step is audio ducking. Now to do some audio ducking, we're gonna to wanna to be able to see our dialogue track. So we'll actually, we'll push shift and focus on the timeline um, for both roles and that will hopefully make our jobs a little bit easier. So I'm gonna show you a little tool for doing some easy audio ducking. Normally people will push alt or option and they'll click on this white line here and they'll add a keyframe, add another keyframe, come to where the dialogue stops, add two keyframes and then they'll drop the volume way down so they can hear what's being said. Films now more than ever are deeply embedded into every culture. And that's a bit of an extreme example, especially for this beginning. The music's actually soft enough. I don't have to drop it a whole lot, but that's usually how people do it. Now, what I like to do is use the range selection tool. So I'm going to right click and delete these keyframes. And we're going to push R or you can select it from this menu here. Come up and range selection. And if we click and drag, you'll notice this yellow box kind of going over our audio. We'll just select the portion that we want to duck out. Now, if I click and drag this line, it will automatically add the needed keyframes to have the audio ducking happen. So let's listen now. Films now more than ever are deeply embedded into every culture. So that's a really quick and easy way to do some audio ducking. Now let's come to a little bit more severe section to really hear the changes. So again, we'll make sure we have our range selection tool selected with R. We'll click and drag over this portion here and we'll just duck the audio way down so we can hear what our dialogue is. I want to help you create films that express yourself to the world. So you'll notice the music's still a little bit loud and I'm gonna show you a tip for fixing that in just a little bit. We might be able to drop the volume just down to maybe 13, but, um, but there's some additional filters that are really help. So we can just do that for all of these audio sections. To do just that. So on this section, I'm not very happy with how the music comes in. So we're just gonna do a little bit of finessing and you can actually click and drag each of these keyframes around to really get it to where you want it. So let's go ahead and check that. To do just that. Perfect. Join me in this. I like how that sounds. So this next step is something I don't actually see being taught frequently. And I, what, I don't know why, because it's actually really, really helpful. Well, let's go ahead and select our music track. And we're gonna come over here to the effects panel. And we're going to look up for an effect called voice or music. Now, I think this is found actually in EQ in the audio effects panel. So we're gonna click and drag voice or music onto our music track. And you'll notice it blasted a bunch of it way too loud, but we're gonna fix that. Come up here to your effects panel and you'll see the amount. And let's go ahead and set that to zero. Now, on this portion where I start to talk, we're gonna add 
a couple keyframes. We'll add a keyframe right before the music decks, and then we're gonna add a keyframe after it's done decking. And we will set this to something like minus 50. Now it, we're gonna come to the end. We'll add another keyframe and then add one more keyframe and we'll set that to zero. Now it's a little bit hard to tell what this just did, but I'll show you. So if we listen before, I will disable it. This is what it sounded like before. I want to help you create films that express yourself to the world. Okay, and this is what it sounds like after. I want to help you create films that express yourself to the world. Okay, so essentially what this filter did is something called EQ carving. So let me preface this with, I am not an audio engineer by any means. I just saw some tutorial videos and I'm just trying to do my best to explain it in a way that hopefully you can understand. So EQ carving works like this. If I go to channel EQ, we're gonna add this filter called channel EQ. And essentially, if we watch this, we'll, we'll add that. We'll push the analyzer and we can actually see what the audio waveforms are doing. I oh, will set that back to post. Okay, so we'll, we'll watch what the audio waveforms are doing here in the music. Um, okay, so typically the human voice falls, I think somewhere between 85 and like to uh, 50. Uh, somewhere in there, I'm not I'm exactly sure. But essentially what the voice or music filter does is it actually drags those frequencies down which is where the human voice is. And essentially that creates more space for the human voice to come through without competing for those same sound frequencies. So I hope that explains it. I will link a video from Ripple Training who does a much better explaining it. And uh, yeah, anyway, so what I like to do is add this voice or music filter over. And again, that's just adding keyframes wherever your music ducks out and this will carve the music for you, adding a lot more clarity to your voice above the music without having to decrease the volume of the uh, music further. So we'll just see how that sounds. And to provide you with the tools necessary to do just that. So we can actually increase the volume a little bit without having to worry about losing our voice. Let's see. And to provide you with the tools necessary to do just that. So you can actually maintain your music volume pretty loud. I know this video was a little bit longer, but I really appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. If it was helpful at all, I would really appreciate it if you consider pressing the like button. It helps my channel out tremendously and it's totally free to you. So also consider subscribing. I have new videos every single Wednesday. Also consider leaving a comment. If you have any tips on this particular video or any of my videos. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, I love reading those comments. So make sure you leave one below and I will see you guys next week.